Jay Clark for Renthal. Uh, in this video, we're going to show how to install chain and sprockets. Um, we're going to use our uh, R1 works chain. Also going to show how to install an O-ring chain as well. And give some tips on that. Uh, chain and sprockets. We got our uh, on this bike. We're gonna actually going to change the gearing. We're going to talk a little about that. With gearing, um, it's a lot about the type of bike, type of riding you're doing, type of power the bike makes to change gearing and gearing ratios. So we're going in this bike. We're going to go one smaller on the rear because the bike makes big power. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Install a new front counter shaft and chain. We'll show you how to do those those things right now. So the first thing we do is it's nice to get the uh, a few of the things loosened before um, you take the chain off. And so we're going to take, we're going to loosen the counter shaft uh, main uh, bolt. Now, some bikes have a huge bolt, like a Yamaha. Um, and some just have a little clip, like Kawasaki's and uh, Suzuki's. So all the bikes are a little bit different in how they get held on. Honda has this uh, long bolt with a special washer, uh, two washers, and it's important that you run all these pieces like they have it. So the first thing you'll do after you, after you get that cover off is put a 12 and have uh, your buddy Dave hold the rear brake down while you go to turn it off. And it shouldn't be held in too tight and you can back it all the way off. Keep, keep the nuts and washers, the bolt and, and the, keep the bolt and the two washers in the right order. The Honda has a nice uh, outside written there, makes it very simple. Okay, so at this point we're going to it, it, it's a good idea if you have your buddy Dave hold your rear brake down and then let it up and you can loosen up the, the nuts uh, to make it a little easier if you, if you don't have a wheel stand. And then you can just do it on the bench and then hold the brake down. So we're going to do just a couple of those and we'll show you how we do it on a, on a wheel stand. Okay, so there's two styles, uh, to, two ways or so to remove the, the uh, clip. You can have your a screwdriver right on the circlip and just give it a tap going forward. Don't be pushing it. At the, at the other angle, or you can Motion Pro makes a nice tool where you can grab the clip with some pliers and push forward and, and give it a pop and the clip will come off like so and then remove the plate. Now on some bikes that have an o-ring chain there you actually have to uh, press off the master link. There, there's, there is no master link, they're, rivet, they're riveted chains so we have to press it off. So in this case we just pull off the master link like so. Okay. Okay. So now we've got our wheel on the stand. We've already loosened most of them on there. So this would just show you, uh, since we have the wheel stand, it's easier just to pull the wheel up here for us, and then have your buddy Dave hold it, boom, and then pu pull it out like so. And then we pull each one out. And so pull the nuts and washers. And, and bolts right on out. At this point, we're going to remove the stock sprocket and put on our, our Renthal chain wheel, and, which is a 48 tooth. We had a 49 on, we're, so we're changing our gearing up. We're going to install our, we're going to put a little thread locker on each of the, each of the bolts. A little bit on the threads, a little bit on the uh, concave part there too as well. And we just drop them right on in, just like so. And we use the um, uh, medium strength here or low strength. You don't want to use high strength. Uh, and as long as you get them good and tight with a little bit of thread locker, they're, they're not going to come loose on you or be too difficult to get apart. Now you just put the nut and the washers back in underneath and get them all started. And so now We'll tighten the same way. You have your buddy Dave tighten them down and just get it snug. He just holds it. And then the wrench is what really tightens. You want to have a good wrench that gets a good grab so you're not round, rounding off your bolts. And we're going to go directly across for an even pattern. Like so. And then we'll, now we're going to start going around the wheel. And here it's, it's pretty good and tight, but uh, nothing too crazy. And you want to be careful not to round off your, your Allens. This, these are already tight here, and we're going to just got two left. Good idea wearing gloves when you're doing this. You're going to smack your knuckles on these uh, on the teeth. 
like so and make sure you're tight all the way around and we're good to go. Snug up our nut on the axle. We don't want it too tight because we, we still got to move it around as we adjust the chain. So we're going to remove our uh, stock sprocket and install the Renthal. And so when we pull the stock sprocket off, um, we pull it off. And like to, it's good to look at it and make sure you put it on the same way so you can see that on this Honda there's only one way that it can really go for the washer to work properly. So the flat side sticks to the outside. And we'll put the nut and Loctite on after we run the chain. So that one of the best ways to, to gauge to break your chain rather than throwing it on the bike is just to lay it up against the stock chain or the chain that you had on there, line it up with the, the pin, your closest one right here. You can see we would need to break our chain right here. Now in this case, we actually changed the gearing on the bike. We went from a 49 to a 48. So now we're going to have to lay our new chain up on the bike and just double check where we're going to be uh, with it properly adjusted. Okay, so we've got the gloves on. Of course, the, the Renthal chains come with handy dandy rubber gloves to help uh, keep the, a dirty job a little cleaner. And so you just run it around the uh, front sprocket and just loop it through. So now, now we've loosened the wheel and we have a gap here from our original adjustment. And we're about halfway through our adjustment on our chain marks. And now we see how much we have to cut off the chain and we're going to have enough to adjust out and be a little bit past, uh, a little bit past halfway. So now we have our mark. We're going to save that mark and break the chain right there. We're going to break right here, and we know we have these, these links to take out. There's a few different types of tools. Some people actually will grind the heads off. Uh, for us, we'd like to have a good tool. There's some, you know, a few different types of tools. T today, we'll be using this new Motion Pro tool. It works really well. We'll show how to, how to take out and break our chain right at that point. So uh, for ease of show, you know, showing everybody how to break this, we're going to be doing it on the bench just a little easier than kind of down at the bike to show you usually we just break it right down there. This Motion Pro tool has a, a brake position and we're going to just dial it in. You just dial it in where the brake pin is inside just a little bit and you just get it nice and snug. Then you can put two wrenches on it and you're going to turn it and just keep turning like you would say a vise or a press and you just keep turning on down. And this is pushing the pin right on through. And you can also set up a ratchet right onto the, the pin. So now we switch to a ratchet. Now you can go a little faster because it takes a while. You have to dial all the way through as you, as you go. This will push the pin all the way out the chain and it doesn't, doesn't damage the chain, doesn't spread it apart. So now at this point we can back it all completely off and our pin will be all the way through. separate out. And there comes the pin. And we haven't damaged anything in here. So we have our chain that we can go run right now. Okay, so now we've got the chain back on. We're going to install our master link. We put put it right through and on with a on non o-ring chain, for the most part the the side plates here just go on real easy. Goes all the way around. And you can see the direction. I'll flip around here as we go around. We can see which direction the clip needs to go in our master link uh, clip. We want it going backwards, basically, so that it, if, if it were ever to get caught in some mud up at your counter shaft area or anything, that it would, wouldn't want to take it off. So with our pliers, we're going to reinstall the clip. So now our clip is all installed. And we want to inspect it really close and look at it to make sure that it's completely seated. And if we damage the clip at all installing it, we need to get a new clip. So now we're going to install our uh, front bolt on our counter shaft. Okay, so we make sure that we got our uh, w both washers in the correct way, and we add a little bit of uh, lower medium uh, Loctite. Probably not red uh, or you know heavy is not necessary. A little bit on the threads there, um, like so, and we just dial in. It's pretty easy. This this bolt usually pretty pretty easy to get started, and then the washers just move them up till they fall into position on this Honda, and then we'll show some tips on some of the other bikes on on their setups as well. At this point, we're ready to tighten it up, and we, we've got a torque wrench here. Uh, you can get the use of feeling how tight if, without the torque wrench, but in this case, if you have it, it's great. You can feel. We set this one at 23 foot-pounds, is what the Honda book recommends. So we're set there. Now we can ins reinstall our, 
our, our guard and then and, and reattach the wires that run inside the, the guards, kind of their bracket for. So we'll reinstall those and then we're going to properly adjust the, the chain. Okay, so in this case here, this is a, uh, on a Suzuki, very similar to Kawasaki. They'll have a clip, a circlip right here. And as you can, you can barely see it right here because we have this black silicone going around it. What we do, once we get the clip back on, we put a, a bead of black silicone around here to keep the clip from uh, moving around. And if it gets caught in mud and packed in here, it's, it's uh, not going to go anywhere. And if you happen to see that the silicone's moved, you know your clips has a problem, but it keeps the clip in place. Okay, on this Yamaha here, you can see they run a washer, which you actually have to bend back, and then you can loosen this washer just as we did on the, on the, uh, on the Honda. So we'll loosen the washer. When you go to put your new sprocket back on, you, you, you tighten it down. And this one, and in this particular case, is around 54 foot-pounds. You need to check your manual to see how tight this should be and apply a little bit of a, a lower medium lock, a thread locker to it with the, with the tab washer bent over. So we've adjusted our chain. We're just tightening it up and proper uh, adjustments there. Right there, we've got a proper adjustment. We'll want to lube it and check it right away uh, for, for proper uh, adjustment all the time. Good idea to keep, an, keep tabs on your... Uh, sprocket bolts to make sure that they don't come loose. So the main difference in an O-ring chain uh, to a regular chain is just obviously the O-rings. And as far as breaking the chain, same process, but the main difference would be when we install the master link. So you put the two O-rings on the, the back side and then two O-rings on the front side. Now with most O-ring chains, the side plate for the master link is a lot tougher going on, so to speak. And, it needs to actually be pressed on. And you can do this in various ways with vice grips and all kinds of other ways, but the best way was, is with a, was with a proper tool. So at this point, we're going to tighten down. Uh, to, and we're trying to push the side plate of the master link down all the way. And it, it fits really snug on, on the pins. And this will allow us room to get the master link on properly. If we don't do this, we risk not being able to get the master link on correctly. And so you want to get it pressed on all the way. And this makes it so the master link can just go right on. Now, of course, we would be doing this on the bike normally. We're just doing this just to show you, um, since we already installed the regular chain, we're just showing you how to do this. Plenty of room for the master link to go on completely correctly right there. And with a, with a good tool, like the Motion Pro tool, that clip with, with the pliers, you can see it goes straight on really easily. Simple as that. So that's all there is to installing chain and sprockets in your bike. A few tips. If you install an O-ring chain on a bike that didn't have one, uh, it's a good idea to get a little spacer like so to step the sprocket away from the cases. This will go on before you put the sprocket on, and that'll get the sprocket away from the cases so you don't rub into the cases. So something like that, uh, easy to get. Uh, ProMotoBill it makes them. I'm sure there's some other companies as well. Um, proper chain adjustment and lubrication is key. Keep it well lubed and good uh, adjustment all the time on your chain. Uh, keep that, and it should last you a long time.